Welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme seven, element two, uneven social development. Exercise books open and revision guides out. I'm Mr S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Uneven social development is often due to a lack of resources. So this can be because we have too many people, so overpopulation, which are overusing the available resources, or having not enough people, so it can't produce what is necessary for a country to develop properly. But it's often exacerbated by how the authorities respond to this imbalance. So let's have a look at some of those factors. If we start off with the birth rate. So we've got reasons why the birth rate is increasing and reasons why it's decreasing. From the increasing side, LICs tend to have the increasing birth rate. And it's usually because of a few different factors. So for example, we've got that there's a high infant mortality rate. So that means there's a lot of babies dying before they reach their first birthday. So if you've got a lot of children dying very young, then the normal response would be to have a lot more children. So then there's a greater chance that at least some of those children will survive into adulthood. Lots of LICs are working in primary industries, which is things like farming, mining, fishing. It's very labor intensive, so it needs a lot of people to do it. So you need a large family as your labor source to work the farm. So the more children you've got, the more children can work the farm to earn you money or to survive. But then we've also got the inequality for women. Girls tend to marry early and therefore they've got a longer period of childbearing so they can have more children, but also they don't have the right of education in some countries. So they stay at home, they don't get an education about why a small family is good or about family planning, and therefore they're going to have more children. Factors for a decreasing birth rate tends to be the HICs, and it tends to be because a lot of people are now focusing on their careers. So women can have an education, do go on to have a career, and therefore their childbearing period is shorter because they're marrying later or they're choosing to have children later. The cost of living is also significantly higher in HICs, the land values are higher, particularly if you're living in a city, and therefore having fewer children means that you can retain more of that income. Girls do have to go to school in most HIC countries and want to go to school and have careers we've discussed. And there is availability on both the education and the access to birth control. On the flip side, we can also have a look at the death rate. And again, one is split for LICs and one is for HICs. So again, while we've also got a increasing birth rate, in LICs we also have a high death rate. And that tends to be because of a lack of infrastructure in terms of healthcare and education on how to protect themselves. And therefore, things like HIV become a huge issue for countries, both socially and economically. Malaria and Ebola have also devastated large areas in LIC countries, which increases the death rate. But as more people live longer in HICs, we start to see an elderly population. And therefore, the elderly are, because they're reaching the end of their life, more likely to die. So HICs even start to develop a higher death rate because they've got an elderly population. Decreasing death rates come from an increase in the provision for healthcare and education. So you've got better healthcare, but also better access to that healthcare, particularly in rural areas. And we've discussed in last lesson how some LICs are tackling this healthcare issue by having remote doctors. So using a mobile phone to discuss an issue that you might have over, the, uh, over a mobile link and thereby getting medical advice and perhaps even a prescription. Education about hygiene and health is standard in most UK schools, but it hasn't always been in LICs. So when that starts to get put into place, people can start to understand things about protecting themselves in terms of their hygiene. Reliable access to water supplies decreases the chances of getting sick, catching a waterborne disease. And then effective sanitation systems, so, sanit uh, so sewer systems, drainage systems, toilets, that effectively remove the potential to pollute the water source. If we have a look at those two things together, 
we use these things called population pyramids in geography. So it represents the structure of the population as a graph. So if we have a look at Hades here, it's got a lot of bars sticking out at the bottom of here. So this represents the age of people. So zero to five, you can see Haiti has a lot of people who are children between the ages of 10 to 15. But you notice that the size of this start to curve in really quickly after the, about the age of 20. So what that's telling us is these concave sides, the sides that dip in, means it's got a high death rate because it means that a lot of these children aren't making it to the older years. The Y base means that there's lots of children being born, so a Y base means a high birth rate. But not many people are reaching into the 60s and above. So that's telling us that their life expectancy, the average age that somebody in Haiti is, about, uh, is expected to live for, is going to be quite low. If we contrast that with the United States, you can see that their birth rate is nowhere near Haiti's. So they've got quite a narrow base, which means it's got a low birth rate. The sides, they do fluctuate a bit, but they're actually quite straight. And the straight sides means that actually the people, the babies that have been born, are making it up into the older years. So the death rate is quite low. And you can see that the top, the peak of this pyramid is a lot wider than it is at Haiti. So if you look at 70% uh, there, and it comes way out on 70 on this side. So a Y peak represents a higher, birth, uh, a higher life expectancy. So these population pyramids are showing us how the population is structured, but also a comparison between countries. So this links into something called the demographic transition model, the DTM, which you could research on your own. Well, that's it for today. Climb the peak of the revision pyramid by completing the try it now tasks. Class dismissed.